Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Miami Total Football. It's been a couple of days since Inter Miami's last game, but once again, same old story. Inter Miami loses, but this time it was via a route, a 4-0 loss away to the Columbus crew, further sinking Inter Miami's playoff chances, all but ending them. Essentially, the team is still mathematically alive, but they're nine points shy of the playoff line in the Eastern Conference now with five games left. You have to imagine those other teams will pick up points. They're not going to all just drop points. All the teams ahead of Inter Miami are not just going to all drop points in these coming weeks. So pretty much done and dusted for Inter Miami. Another rough performance, another rough night, and a lot more questions asked about the direction of this team. At this point in time, we sit in a place where mathematically it's not impossible still to qualify for the playoffs, but but it's going to be an absolute mountain to climb for us. And uh, I sit here thinking, I sit here now thinking as the manager in terms of uh, we've we, we've got a lot of uh, big questions uh, and we've got a lot of big decisions to make. Now there's a lot of things to dissect from this game, including Robbie Robinson's major major blunder in the first half. The game was 0-0. Inter Miami was putting a good tactical performance forth. They were not dominating proceedings by any means or creating a whole lot of chances, but they were having control at certain times. They were dictating the tempo at certain times. They were pressing high, making life somewhat difficult for the Columbus crew. And then Robbie Robinson in the 29th minute has a glorious golden one-on-one -on -one opportunity after pouncing on an error at the back. He's in on goal, has the goalkeeper Eloy Room at his mercy, and somehow Robbie Robinson just twists himself into a pretzel. He stumbles over the ball while he's reaching the penalty area. He loses possession. Eloy Room is able to pick it up. The danger is averted for the Columbus crew, and they're reinvigorated while Inter Miami just sunk after that. They lose, they give up two goals shortly thereafter. The first one in the 39th minute off a header from Giassi Zardes, and then in the 44th minute after Gonzalo Higuain misplays a, a throw in, a bad first touch there, a bad control, a bad reception, leads to a quick counterattack and a goal for the Columbus crew to make it 2-0 at half time. Now from an emotional standpoint, that's obviously a big blow from being in a game that you were competitive into being down 2-0 at halftime. A huge, huge hit there, and Inter Miami after that just never really looked like a team in the second half that believed they could get back into it. There were individuals that tried to fight and tried to show that desire, most notably, in my opinion, Gregory and Lewis Morgan, but much of the rest of the team looked like they knew what the outcome was, not only of this game, but of this season. They just did not look like a team that believed in the ability to come back in the face of adversity after so much of it this year. You know, there was no resilience, no rebelliousness, no response from Inter Miami in that second half. And they go on to give up two more goals and suffer their latest lopsided loss in a season full of them. I think it's a very difficult moment for us. Uh, you know, it was a very important game. Uh, you know, a playoff game. Uh, um, we didn't show up. We didn't play good football. And I think Columbus did uh, much better than us. Now, going back to Robbie Robinson's blunder, his gap, you can't even call it a miss because he didn't even get a shot off, which is inexcusable and unacceptable for a player at this level. He has to get a shot off. If it's saved, if it goes wide of the frame or high of the crossbar, okay, it's not great, but at least you got a shot off. To not even get a shot off is just downright inexcusable. And, you know, the, the CBS4 Inter Miami analyst on TV even said it himself, Ray Hudson, who's normally complimentary. He said it himself in that that is just nowhere near good enough for any level of professional player. And that has to be something that Robbie Robinson corrects because that's just not good enough. You cannot make mistakes like that on one-on-one -on -one opportunities when you have the goalkeeper at your mercy. At least get a shot off. And I just felt that the minute that Robbie didn't score that 1v1, uh, the team lost all belief. Uh, it really affected the team mentally. But switching gears and going back to Phil Neville, and not necessarily on this play because I don't think it's Phil Neville's fault that Robbie Robinson doesn't get a shot off on goal, but Phil Neville also needs to be put under the microscope here because he continuously puts Robbie Robinson up top or has as of late continuously put Robbie Robinson up top when Robbie Robinson has shown that it does not suit him, that it doesn't fit 
his qualities. He doesn't get many shots off. He hasn't, I don't think he's put, I think he has maybe one shot on target in the last four games since he's returned to the number nine position. He hasn't generated a whole lot of danger. He hasn't looked all that comfortable. He hasn't been that threatening, but yet Phil Neville continues to trot him out time and again and again and again, despite nothing indicating that things are going to change. And that to me is on the coach because you're exposing the player to bad performances, bad moments and criticism. And it's not just Robbie Robinson that you can look at as an example of that. Kelvin Leardam is another one. He allows Giassi Zardes to get the, the free header or an open header on the opening goal. Giassi Zardes outleaps him. Kelvin Leardam doesn't even jump to, to combat or test the striker. But Kelvin Leardam is not a natural center back. And Phil Neville has deployed him time and again at center back in recent weeks. Now, look, I know Phil Neville is handicapped or is handcuffed. Uh, because of the players he has available. But that's even more reason why he shouldn't be forcing square pegs into round holes. If Calvin Leardham is not a natural center back, and he's shown in multiple games that he's weak in that position, that he gives up goals in that position, whether it's at, at the sweeper spot in the middle of the, of the the three center backs or whether it's at, at the right center back, regardless, then you have to change it. You can't continue to trot him out and expect different results. You've seen the results. He's not doesn't do a great job there. It's not his natural position. So get him out of there and put him in a natural position or change the formation. And I know Phil Neville likes the five-man back line. It's what helped Inter Miami get on its best run of form this season. But right now, with the injuries, with the lack of personnel, and with the lack of results and performances as of late, I don't understand why he continues to go back. Or maybe I do understand, but I don't agree with his decision to continue to go back to the same exact thing when he sees that it's not working. Not only from a collective standpoint, but from an individual standpoint. I think Kelvin Leardam and Robbie Robinson are the two biggest examples. I, th I think I think first and foremost, forget forget the players. We, I look at myself straight away and, and I take full responsibility for everything that goes on in the dressing room, on the pitch and off the pitch. That that ultimately the book stops with me as the manager. So, so I think I think that's really important to stay to say is that. You know, when, when a team loses you, you've got to look at the manager first and you've got to look at the tactics, the systems, the players you pick, the roster that you've built. Uh, and there's no hiding place. There's no hiding place for me at this moment in time or for my, my staff or for the players. And, 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 you know, I think it's really important that I have to take responsibility. It's my job to get this team better. It's my job to coach better. It's my job to make sure that those players are fit enough to play 90 minutes, fit enough to get through 90 minutes, fit enough to play the way that I want to play. Uh, you know, so so that's that's the questions that uh, those are the questions that I have to ask myself and my, and, and my staff. So, what can Inter Miami do at this point with five games left in the season? What's one possibility? I think is that they could change the formation. We saw at the end of this game, Phil Neville during those final few minutes change back into the four-two-three-one. You saw him on the broadcast make that signal, and they changed into it for the last six, seven, eight minutes. And you saw a more reinvigorated Lewis Morgan on the right wing in a more advanced position. He looked much more energized, like he had gotten an injection of confidence uh, playing his more natural spot. So I imagine that there was self-motivation there for him. But just in general for the, for the collective, I think they need to go back to the 4-2-3-1 and just go for it. Just go for it. If you lose going for it, it's better than losing, playing ugly, playing this boring, dull, bland style of them just sitting back and defending with numbers just go for it and live with the results live with the results if you get blown out at least you try to show something maybe you'll get a goal maybe you'll generate some excitement this bland style of getting blown out time and again it's not doing any service for the team's confidence and it's not doing any, any service for the fans who are invested into this team so i think changing the formation is needed and it could help generate some soccer something that federico Higuain alluded to after the game when it sounded like maybe he's not all that in agreement with Phil Neville's tactics. Para meter goles es necesario generar la mayor cantidad de, de situaciones posible. Y, y estoy convencido de, de que para generar situaciones el equipo tiene tendría que generar eh, más fútbol. Eh, no se puede llegar o es más fácil de defender eh, eh, el juego directo que el juego de gestación, ¿no? Tratando de, de llevar la pelota de un lado hacia el otro but that about does it for now what did you think of inter miami's four to zero loss to the columbus crew
crew, are you disappointed given the direction of the team? Are you very worried about where things are headed? Did you think anyone played well? What do you think about the formation? Should it go back to the 4-2-3-1 on Wednesday against Toronto FC? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, let me know if you're worried about the, that defeated demeanor that we saw in the second half and whether you think that could trickle into the remaining five matches of the year. Also, let me know what you thought about Robbie Robinson's blunder. Do you think it's time for Julian Carranza to maybe get a start ahead of him at the number nine position? Do you think it's time to move him out wide? Again, let me know in the comments section below. As always, we'll be back very soon to review the game against Toronto FC. So make sure you stay locked into Miami Total Football for that. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I am Franco Panizo. This is Miami Total Football, and we'll see you guys again very soon.